Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. You are invited to read along with us, either in unison or responsively, by half verse. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your heart before God, who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low state cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath. All of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it. The power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. For you repay everyone according to their deeds. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. 
I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, a son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. And so the Gospel of Mark begins the story of Jesus. The only person on the scene basically before this has been John the Baptist. John the Baptist calling people to a baptism of repentance. Jesus goes and gets the baptism of repentance. And then Mark's little two sentence blurb about the temptation goes by very quickly. And then here in the 14th verse of this gospel, Jesus speaks for the first time. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. I want to play a little bit with that word repent today. I know the freight it carries. I know the history of how it's been used. I know how so often it is not something positive, but a bludgeon to hit people with. It's something that other people should do so that they can be good enough to join us. Repent. At the heart of that word is a key concept of turning around, changing direction. We keep hearing that, in fact, the, the, the word repent, not translated that way now in our New Revised Standard Version of the story of Jonah, because that's all we hear is sinfulness and, oh, and beating your breast and repenting of evil. 
But in the Jonah story, if you look it up in your King James, the Hebrew word is translated and God repented. God changed direction. God went in a different way, place. And I know that my background of hearing these stories when I was a little kid of in all in the King James means that I always hear that story with and God repented and it always catches me up. Just like um, when the baby is wrapped in bands of cloth, it catches me because I want to hear swaddling clothes. Well, I also want to hear in the, in the story about Jonah that God repents. The people of Nineveh, Jonah does a the shortest, worst sermon in the world. In the Hebrew, it's five words long. Uh, 40 days more and Nineveh will be destroyed. Um, he walks one third of the way into the city. It's a three days walk across. He goes in one day, spouts out five words, and the entire city turns around, changes direction. Now, when you've got evil in your life, change in direction means turning away from evil. But repent, that changing direction might have so much more to teach us if God repents. If Jesus takes a baptism of repentance and then starts something new in his life. I had never thought about it that way until this year, um, this week, as I'm playing with this word repentance and going, why does Jesus need to be baptized? Because now something new, he's turning not necessarily away from something awful, but towards something new. And he looks at these fishermen who are not being bad by being fishermen. And he says, repent, follow me, change your direction. Now it's um, often considered the big miracle here is that they immediately followed him. But if you go on to the first verse of chapter two, um, it talks about how Jesus is at home in Capernaum. I suspect that these men already knew Jesus. He had a home there. This 30-year-old Jewish man had settled into Capernaum, and I wonder how many conversations he had had with these fishermen sitting on the bank of the Sea of Galilee in the evening after fishing time, talking about the world, talking about the Romans, talking about everything about life, about God, about themselves. And they keep wondering, when? And he walks up and he goes, it's now. The time is fulfilled. <laughs> Guess what? It's time. I have turned. I am ready to move into this direction. Come with me. Follow me. And they turn from fishing to follow this one. Repent. When I was on my sabbatical back in 2008 and I was walking from town to town with my backpack on my back um, up there in New Hampshire, um, I would walk for a day and think and talk to God. And then I would sit for a day in a town, a small town park or in a pub or a coffee shop and talk to people about God. Listen for their stories about their faith journey. And one day as I was walking along, all of a sudden, I was walking into Manchester, and there on the ground in front of me was, you know, those signs you hold up like car wash. Now, this one is a sign that somebody had been holding, and it said in big, bold letters, repent. It had been abandoned on the ground there. And it got me thinking about what I'd been hearing from so many people about the ways that the church had hurt them the ways they had been bludgeoned with that word about how they were evil and they needed to repent and they needed to change or their parents had needed to change or something was wrong and they couldn't fit in yet. And when I saw that and I'd been listening to these stories, um, I wondered, I wondered what if we picked that sign up and carried it, turned around so that we could read it? What if we were the ones to repent? And I want us to consider that today. What are the things that we need in our lives to change direction on? I hear as we talk about the issues of racism in this country and people go, well, my parents didn't own slaves and my great grandparents didn't own slaves. I'm not saying that there's something evil, awful, even in, your, in, your, in the way you live today, but maybe there's a new way to turn to that we are called to repent, to change direction, 
and to follow Christ? What if we repent of not loving the other so much that we would give things up for them? For God so loved the world that he gave up everything, not to condemn it, but to save it. What if we love so much? What if we changed our direction so much that we would follow that way? What if we changed our minds about our own lives, about saying that everything is okay for me, and instead looked at the world and said, we need to change direction? We're killing the creation. We need to change direction. We're not allowing opportunities for everyone to flourish. We need to change direction. What if we are the ones today to hear that Jesus who we've been sitting and listening to in the evening over a beer um, or with a cup of tea in the morning, talking about with God about life and about our lives. And what if Jesus looked at us right now and said, now, now is the time. All three of our stories today talk about it being the time. In just a few days, Jonah says, the time is fulfilled, Jesus says. It is near at hand, Paul says. The time is now, today, to repent. Sometimes that'll be turning away from things that are not right in our lives. But very often, that is turning to God's better way, turning to a new way, letting go of things and our preparations and just following. Repent, for you can be the bearer of God's good, new, good news to a world that has been beaten, that has been hurt, that has been injured. What if we repent of not being willing to speak of the faith that is in us and instead allow the name Jesus to just be carried up the capital steps by armed insurgents. What if we repent of allowing that to be the loudest voice? What if we change our direction and instead follow the Savior who wishes good news to be heard, to be lived, to touch each one? I challenge you to sit down with that first couple of chapters of Mark and see what God does as Jesus changes direction after the baptism and moves into a new way. See the ways that Jesus touches the world with good news, with healing of heart, body, mind, of calling forth those who don't know that God even sees them of breaking through taboos. He touches a leper. He doesn't just say, be well. He reaches out and touches. May we repent. May we change direction. May we find light and love on a new path. Amen.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for you have called us to know you and to proclaim your good news. Lord, make us worthy of our calling. May we be faithful as we seek to follow you. We pray that each in their individual calling may seek to do your will and that St. James may be a place where all may find your good news lived among us in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who respond to your call and find themselves in difficult places. For those who do not cling to the things of this world, but have their eyes fixed firmly on the presences of your kingdom. May how we do our work and how we treat each other reflect your calling to us daily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who celebrate birthdays this week, and especially for Tim Scobie, Doris Kahn, Hope Esteban, Martha Combs, and Lisa Rohr. And for those who celebrate anniversaries, especially Nancy and Dick Mitchell and Hank and Gloria Freiburg, you are invited to name your thanksgivings. <clears throat> Make us aware that in each new day, you are ever calling us to new ventures, new visions. You call us to extend ourselves. We pray for the communities to which we belong and in which we have an active share. May we see our daily life and work as places in which to live out your good news. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all whose lives have been impacted by the pandemic. We pray for the underprivileged, the unemployed, for the work weary and for the exploited, for those whose world has collapsed around them. We pray for all who through illness are unable to fulfill themselves, for all who are frustrated with life, all who feel like giving up. We remember all who have asked for our prayers, especially Joel, the Owens family, Brian, Jeannie, Georgie, Jenny, Janice, Mavis, Charles, Steve and Anna Lee and family, Julie, Regina, Teresa, Jim, Charles, Brandon, Bud, and Monica Huffman. You are invited to name those for whom you pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have been faithful disciples, who have heeded your call and obeyed your commands. We pray for those who now serve you with the saints in glory, especially Butch Owens, Pam Howell, Nicholas Wallisuck, Sam and Amanda Templeman, and J.D. Summerlin. You are invited to name those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as you call the disciples, open our ears to your calling. Open our eyes to your presence. Open our hearts to your love, that we may hear you and hearing you may love you, and loving you may serve you and this world, for serving you is perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Amen. And remember, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love. 
Make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and walk with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.